Built the house and I'll take that wager. They say you're no legend when you see one. Watch me now. I won't like fun. I'm gonna save the ground. Can't stop me now. I don't give up and I won't back down. I'm a force of nature. Can't be contained. I got lightning running all through my veins. Watch me now. Watch me now. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in the booth, Fight Corner, we're back in 2022. This is the first interview of 2022. It's a big one because we have a historic fight on our hands. This will be the first ever BKFC 125 pound title, and it will happen at Knucklemania 2, February 19th in Hollywood, Florida. And it has been a long-awaited journey, right? And there's really nobody more deserving to fight it than these two individuals right now. Uh, and they just signed, signed a bout agreement. One of them is 4-0 in the organization. The other one is a, on a four-fight win streak. And we have one of them with us today, introducing the most feared and hungriest woman in Bare Knuckle Fighting Championships, Christine Faria. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Yeah, so I wanted to, like, this, this, this fight, you know, it's, it's finally here. Uh, and, like, what are your feelings about it now? Like, did you ever doubt that this, that this one would happen? Yeah, I did, I, well, what part the the opponent or the title? Yeah, I mean fight? the yeah this 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 like the way it is now like the opponent the title fight, uh yeah. It, yeah, it's kind of weird because I I fought her for a title before and I think it was a little premature, you know, for bare knuckle um, when we fought the first time and then how I won I didn't like how I won by the cut I would beat her regardless but I wish it, it was a better win. Um, Mm-hmm. I'm just happy I'm fighting for the title, and it, it doesn't matter who it doesn't matter who's in front of me right now. Uh, I just want to be the first uh, BKFC champion. And I told I shot uh, David Feldman that text probably a year and a half ago. You know, mm-hmm. so it's it's been a while. He hasn't crowned anybody, and I'm glad yeah. that you know I got over with my surgery. I made the right decision to to have my surgery, so I'm 100 percent and. It's on. It's on. So what, is the, what was like the most frustrating part about this whole process of making this fight happen? Because, you know, it was like, it's like the one that uh, everyone knew would happen maybe eventually. But then there was yeah. talk of a tournament, right? Um, and then um, maybe they would have Britain fight someone else for some reason, even though like you definitely have like the best case to, to fight for that title. Right. Uh, the most frustrating thing would be probably... Just, you know, just p- people being pushed for different reasons. I thought maybe, like, Taylor would be able to, maybe it would be a Taylor Britain thing for for marketing purposes. But since, mm. uh, you know, I, I didn't know if it, the right thing was going to be done. And it is. Yeah. So he, he, we're, we both came on at exactly the same time. I was on BKFC 2. She was on BKFC 2. The only thing that changed was is my opponent didn't show up mm-hmm. to BKFC 2. I was there at the event. I got paid for that event. Um, so we're both his beginning people. And I think it's it's good that we both get the title shot. Yeah, you mean like that's, this is like the, the home the home breed of uh, of talent that they have. Right, and, and yeah, he, and, he, and, yeah. He brought, and he brought us up. So he's cultivating his own his own and i think that's great instead of these ufc girls coming in no offense to them or anything like that um just coming in for one and done or you know not really having passion for it you know i believe that i have true passion for better enough i believe i was made for this i believe i wish it was earlier in my career because i really do love it and it's it's super uh i adapted to it very well Mm -hmm. Yeah, you've definitely found your niche because I've I've also heard you speak about that uh, MMA really wasn't your thing. Like you've total you've respect for yeah. the you've respect oh, yeah, for it, like the sport and everything. But you you really like the stand up, you know, and the and the striking. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't want to be holding somebody, and I I don't want anybody to have a way out of me punching them, you know, or whatever, you know. And mm. That's why I liked Muay Thai. I was a Muay Thai fighter for many years. Yeah, 
I, I just want to kick, punch, elbow, um, and that's it. I, I don't want to hug you and slam you and get on mm. top of you. Like, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, you you just uh, touched upon, like, these uh, UFC girls and some of these girls with big followings uh, being brought in, you know, for promotional purposes. And I thought that was, uh, in the beginning, especially a brilliant concept uh, for BKFC it to is. get viewers in. And, uh, you know, that's like how also, I mean, I got to know your opponent, uh, Britton Hart, through because of that page fight, you know, like, um, right, which works in your favor. I mean, like in the end, um, yeah. it's yeah, yeah more more eyeballs. You, um, are you in a way happy that Britain beat Pearl and beat uh, Paige? I don't want her to succeed in any way. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I really don't like her. Um. Like, what about it? Because you did beat her, and that was, like, it was around one finish, wasn't it, Dr. Stoppage? So, um, I think it's probably, I don't know. At this point, do I think it would be better for the sport for Paige or Pearl to win? I don't know. Because it is bare knuckle. And it's its own, and... How long are those girls going to stay? Are yeah. those girls really want to be bare, bare knuckle fighters? Do they want to be bare knuckle champions? Or do they just want to be a champion? I want to be a bare knuckle champion. Mm. You know, so I don't know. I, I'm conflicted with now with, you know, of course I want the sport to grow and it takes certain names and they've already been built by the UFC because the UFC has been on the map so long. They have all these followers and, Uh, they have everybody from the UFC that some of them came over and watched Bare Knuckle. So, I mean, I, uh, I'm stuck in between, like, who am I glad she won? Just so that it's like the the home uh, breed that, you know, gets the promotional push. In yeah. Because at the same time, I mean, like, Britain is someone who also, she wants to be a Bare Knuckle champion, as you said. Like, yeah, I mean, she yeah, does. You know, at the same time. She does. Yeah, she yeah. does. Um, yeah, I mean... Yeah, it, it, to put the, the, the personal feelings aside, I guess I, I do appreciate that it's me and her going for the BKFC belt. And I think it's two of David Feldman's first, of his first besides Beck Rawlings that she got and she left too. So um, mm. we're two of the homegrown, you know, originals. So like, okay, now you seem to really like, you, you found your niche and this is definitely what you want to do and this is what you're good at. Like the bare knuckle, it's, it's, it's also different than boxing. It's, You know, you came from uh, Invicta. Uh, wh how, how did you find out about bare knuckle fighting at BKFC in particular? When did they reach out? Like, how did this whole process happen? And like, yeah, when they, did you really realize out. also, like, this is the thing that I want to do and I'm going to excel at? Oh, yeah. I mean, when they reached out, I, I, didn't, I thought it was like an underground thing. So I was like, no, nah, I don't really, I'm not into the underground. Like, one of my coaches says, don't do the underground stuff. Stay stay in the commissioned fights and stuff like that because there's insurance <laughs> If you get hurt on the undergrad, you don't have any insurance. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll never do that. And they told me that young. So I just never got into the underground stuff. Yeah. Um, so when they contacted me, I thought it was either the, the underground stuff that I didn't want to get involved in or the, it was fake. So mm -hmm. I, I didn't know. So I went, when, um, I, then I saw Beck Rawlings getting ready for the fight. I was like, oh, I want to fight Beck Rawlings. Let's do this his names I'll, i'll beat i'll beat the brakes off yeah. this chick so um <laughs> yeah i i told david i was like yeah i'm in so you know i that's that's how i got into bare knuckle uh they contacted me and i just took a chance i'd like to fight and i wasn't getting um i didn't really like mma and it was they said bare knuckle boxing so i was like what's up you know and i was already i had started boxing because in my Uh, my last Invicta fight that I just ha had ha had um, the girl outboxed me. So I got into a boxing gym. So it's so crazy that I started boxing like a few, probably about three, four months, five months before they contact or like maybe, maybe a year. I might have, it might have been like a year, close to, yeah. closer to a year that I had started strictly boxing. That's it. Right. You know, so. That's what motivated me to start boxing was I was getting, I got outboxed by a Karina Rodriguez. She's now the champion over in Invicta. Now, like, 
boxing is uh, it's a sweet science and i know like you're you're you seem yeah. you're obsessed with boxing i see you like watching those great fights all the time and probably picking up all these little yeah. intricacies that people that don't know the sport yeah. really don't you know don't pick up on they, they just think it's two people bashing each other what's the but then again like bare knuckle is so much different like what are the biggest differences you think between the difficulties you had in adapting to uh bare knuckle as opposed to boxing I think bare knuckle boxing is that there's only slight differences to boxing. You know, I mean, it's very different, but like the mechanics, um, the defense is different. Uh, the punching's the same. You just got to be more careful how hard you're throwing. You know, everything's the same. That's why I train strictly boxing for bare knuckle boxing. But then I add in my little twist and I still, I have Muay Thai behind me that I have the Muay Thai habits behind me for the for the clinch and um, right. like certain blocks that I used to use for kicking, I use for, for my, my bare knuckle. So you don't want to, anyway, there's not a lot of things I want. I like to reveal because there's a lot of things that I see mistakes in the women that they're doing that yeah. I'm capitalizing on. So I don't, I'm not going to talk about everything. If they want, if they want that, they're going to have to come pay you for it <laughs> because I'm probably we'll going to have to fight you. We'll say it off the oh. record, off the record. You can right, let me know. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. So, absolutely. But, okay. Well, you're, you're like, um, you're a fighter. Like, you're not a, there's like bare knuckle isn't too far off of, I think your youth, like you, you've, you've spoken about, you know, you haven't had the easiest, um, past, past, you know, now, what was for you like the hardest part about growing up and like kind of what shaped you into maybe the, 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 the fighter you are today? I mean, I think we've all had our own struggle. So like when I say, Oh, I had, the, I had a hard bringing up. I think we all did, especially we all go through teenage years and the confusion and then making the choices of going that way or that way. So, you know, I, I just, I guess I, I picked a, a bumpier ride than most and I like to fight I not necessarily like to fight but I didn't I I stood up for myself you know so hmm. I think like the the crowd I hung around with with my brother and all of his friends and I I got along with dudes a lot and um uh just they were <laughs> <gasps> they're nutcases so they're always fighting and so I would always be involved with them fighting and and if uh, girls tested me then I stepped up I, I just I have that something within me and I'm like I back then I didn't like to fight I was like kind of, you know you have that fear of fighting and I didn't like that feeling so yeah I mean like, I think everybody naturally does have I didn't it. go around I didn't go around like bullying people you know what i mean yeah like, like i mean you like it, yeah it's like defending people. yourself it was all self-defense yeah, you know? yeah well it was, yeah. it was it was mutual fights like fuck you no fuck you you know or mm. we we're in i was in cali and then i moved from one city to another and they're like where are you from and i said i'm from there and then then people didn't like us because we were from another place and i'm just like wait i just moved my parents just moved here moved me here like oh in God. our heads we don't understand what's going on so we had my brother my brother had a lot more to deal with on the guy side because there of course guys yeah. fight more and stuff but i um i did too on my side and i would i would fight whoever and stand up for myself and then i ended up in con continuation schools and then they're even rougher there i was behind i went to school behind juvenile hall so i would pass walk by juvenile hall every right. single fucking day you know and um buddy from juvenile hall was came to that school so i got in trouble for bringing a knife to school because i was protecting myself doing whatever i got to do and then um i got caught with it and so i guess someone saw it and then turned me in and then i got expelled and then ended up at that school and then ended up in more fights we were, you know around with the same kind of people so it's it put even even more in that oh it, it was a crazy so yeah i'm, I'm not i'm, I'm um comfortable in chaos i'm comfortable in violent situations you know i calm down Whew. you know what i mean i might i having a high anxiety outside of it in the but when i'm in it i don't have any i'm just like okay mm -hmm. i calm down my mind slows Dude, down I, I, yes I, I i i know what you mean it's also yeah. the same like even like back in school i was like 
because I grew up. This is we're we're now in Amman, Jordan, in the Middle East. Like this is a temporary studio we set up, right? This is where I grew yeah, up. It's yeah. like similar. It was like similar to what what you what kind of described in school. Like I never wanted to fight, and even if I got picked on, once you're in the fight, I was like, this is my zone. Yeah. That's why I knew, like, right. even nowadays, like when because I deal with like quite some anxiety. Like when I'm stressed, like this is like heavy anxiety. Yeah. The right. um, even boxing training or like sparring is like my outlet where I'm like, why do I now not feel anxious? Like you know what I mean? Like right. it's that you know maybe yeah. you're in the zone there. You can focus there. Yeah. So, yeah, 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 yeah. I love it, and I love, and I get those when I'm perform uh, competing. I have those moments. I'm free, just like I say. Though, like those, like free moments, and then I win, and then I get about two, three minutes of freedom within, like from everything in my brain that my crazy brain is right. The anxiety, the whatever goes on in my fucking mm. psycho brain, is gone, and I'm I feel nothing but accomplishment and success and joy and and uh, just the highest feeling in the world and i guess yeah. that's what i chase probably <laughs> that's yeah. what i'm chasing you know yeah and we all want to chase the thing we're good at i think if you're like if that's like what on a daily basis is happening or like at least several times a week uh and you're you, you know you're you're good at that at the fighting part yeah you know, you start looking Even at like, it, opportunities it, like, how, how can I make money with this? Maybe like as crazy as it sounds like, yeah, how can I make money? Being yeah. up? Absolutely. Like my first, uh, my first uh, larger amateur fight um, as a Muay Thai fighter, uh, I fought a DA. It was so dope. I fought a DA, yeah. beat the shit out of her. And it was just like, from where I come from, you know what I mean? It was kind of like, I'm fighting yeah. a DA. Like, that's crazy. So like, blah, 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 blah. And then I, knocked her down and then i stopped her and i made her quit so it's just like yeah it's payback <laughs> it reminds me of uh because the last bare knuckle fighter we interviewed your friend jenny savage and uh, she got to fight yeah. uh she had uh you know some issues with the law earlier in her life and told me the same thing about like i can now legally beat up a police officer like she fought a police officer at some point <laughs> and it's like oh that, yeah that, that feeling of like satisfaction your whole like your yeah. frustration from your youth comes out you know yeah mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> so all right, so but but you know there's there comes a point where like I I don't know if you always thought that fighting was an option as a as a career, and like you have to sort of think about your future. Like, what am I gonna do with my future? I'm gonna survive. Um, what like were there any career paths you had in mind? Like how how did you get to this fighting thing and make it materialize? I went. I ended up going to college. Uh, at first I went for account uh no it then accounting because i'm from the bay area so silicon valley it was it then i went to accounting then i just did business right and i was training at the same time and one of my coaches was just like dude you're like missing practice and not when i was working full time so i worked full time go to school full time and try to fight so he's like dude you need to make a decision like you're wasting your time you're giving half ass here da, 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 da. so mm -hmm. i quit school you know so um <laughs> Was it the best choice? I don't know. Like, I, I wish I would have finished my business. I hope a coach never tells a student to quit college. And, right. you know, I just want to put that out there. Um, I would never tell my student that I would work around it, you know. But yeah. uh, I, I just, I, you know, I listen to a lot of motivational stuff. And a lot of them said, don't give yourself a backup plan. You know, if you give yourself a backup plan, then you're in the back of your head you know, you have something to fall back on. Right. I had nothing to fall back on. I mm -hmm. literally have nothing to fall back on. Um, that's why I think I fight so hard. And, and I also fight so hard and, and I go for it to my, I chose it as a career and I stuck with it. No matter what happened, no matter who promoters, not putting me on me feeling alienated, me not being the look, me not having enough money to, to whatever, you know, all the whole path, the whole journey, I just mm -hmm. stay true to myself and stay true to the goal, no matter what, no matter how b bad I was, because I would look at fights and I'd be like, holy shit, like, I don't even look good as a fighter. Like, I'm beating people, but it's just like, there's no technique. It's, like, it's just going in like, ah, you know, yeah. just, you know, so I just, and then I would, uh, I'm like, okay, I'm never going to move up if I don't get better technically. So. I didn't give myself any other option in a career. 
there, everything else was just to maintain my fighting. Mm -hmm. And I made that decision. It, it keeps me sane. It keeps me healthy. It keeps me eating right. It keeps um, the dopamine, the serotonin, everything flowing well in my body to keep me functioning as a productive human. And fighting teaches you to be compassionate and have empathy and know when to beat, like if you're in a, uh, sparring someone smaller than you or um, a kid or someone that's bigger than you or stronger than you, you understand the levels and you can learn how to control your temper, your emotions, because you're getting your ass kicked by someone who's stronger, faster, better, or, yeah. um, or you, you have to take it easier on somebody. So it teaches you so many different things. And it's taught me uh, so many, so much control within myself to keep me out of trouble and to keep me from exploding and my anger issues and all this shit. So I stuck to it as a career because it helps me not only um, uh, emotionally, mentally, physically, it just, it, it it's, it's my fucking freedom. It's yeah. my freedom. It's my freedom for myself. So I do this for many different reasons. And it's not just for money, which is, I mean, I hope I can make, a, a, you know, a generate some money for myself and uh, being able to do this. Uh, but the main thing for me is just having a decent life and being able to be healthy and be a positive thing in, in, in the world instead of a negative, like I was previously to fighting, mm. you know, I, I don't think I was giving the world very much good before this. Do you want to be a productive um, so, member of society in that way as well? I, I just like, want to be, you know, no, be yeah. able to function. Yeah. Mm. So I just think even, even if I wasn't making that much or whatever, making that much money um, in my career, uh, I just feel like you stick to the plan and eventually it's going to flourish. Even if it's after my career, you know, whatever this turns into, I just know I've invested over a decade into combat sports. I'm yep. going to be able to live off of uh, my, my knowledge, you know? Right. Yeah. So because you moved to Vegas, right? For the for the fighting, I, I assume it's like because uh, it's the fighting capital of the world. Is that is that why you moved to Vegas? Yeah, because there's Absolutely. all the gyms there, yeah. and that's where you thought you had like Very you smart, set, set yes. yourself up for success. You know. Yeah, I did. I did. Probably get the best sparring partners, and you know, um, like from there, like I figured. Yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead. No, I, I figured that. I figured like okay, yeah. move to the boxing capital. Why not? You that's know? what a lot of people do. And what kind of job? Like, did you immediately start like? You got other jobs on the side to like before yeah, because yeah, I think because yeah. now you also train security. at the gym. You you train at you also train other people. Yeah, no, I'm a coach. Yeah, You're a coach, I'm a coach. Yeah. I'm a coach and I, Uber. I drive Uber, and um, oh, that's sick. Yeah. yeah, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, and um, is there like that 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 have you had that phase where like there's always a period of time or maybe in a certain event or something that that shifts people's life around like a pivotal moment that really made them go for their goals or like you know like where you really feel like you changed your life and turned it around yeah yeah that's when i started fighting so i feel like that fighting amateur yeah. or like your first pro fight no um, amateur when Just, i yeah. when i the first time i got my ass kicked in the gym <laughs> right. and that was like probably within a week mm -hmm. of me trying fighting me trying fighting uh, training it mm -hmm. when I when I felt that and I then I saw Chris Cyborg you know that's what back in the day I saw Chris Cyborg I was like she's making a career out of it she looks like she's doing well mm -hmm. I'm going for it yeah. 100% and I just what I made the decision and went and never strayed literally never strayed yeah you know you knew that you know that's it that's something like within it it's within, yeah. It and awakens like know. the whole like, and then now I saw the light is what people say that, yeah, yeah. And it's not some big ass like people will be like, well, I found this and it's some big like change. Yeah, no. Or, no, it was fucking shit. The process was like, do I belong here? Nobody wanted me there because I was shit and I hit hard and I was aggressive. Nobody really liked me like in that way because of the way I came like that. Uh, Mm. But I didn't know any better. I'm coming from street fights, bro. 
yeah. like weapons and surviving. <laughs> so I didn't know the fucking levels. So like a lot of people didn't like to work with me, like because I didn't know that level, but I had to be taught that shit. And p- trust me, I was humbled and the shit got beat out of me, but I'm so stubborn that I didn't get it. I would get my ass kicked and I just get more mad. Yeah. I don't, I don't cower down. No, I'm like, fuck no. you. Ah, trying but, to hit you harder. Like you'll knock me down. I'll get up and try and hit you harder. Like I get pissed. So it's natural. Yeah, I'm a it's it's a natural. I wish I would have found it much younger. Um mm-hmm. shit, I'd be a phenom. I feel like. Just be with my dedication and how much I am in love with this. Well, now you have the chance to like, you know, this is the, the getting like the this was going to be one of the last questions. But like, I'll bring it up now. I was like, at your age, you know, like I was winning this belt, the inaugural 125 pound BKFC belt. Is it the crown jewel of your career or like do you see yourself? Do you see something in the future or even in your past that is like more of a crown jewel? Nah, it's a, this is where I want to retire. I want to retire with Barrett. Bare knuckle. Um, this will be my biggest accomplishment, but I, I do want to defend it. Um, I, I don't, I want to, I'm going to retire bare knuckle. I don't want to go anywhere else. I do want to, I do want to box. I do want to do some boxing in between. I do um, see how I do, you know, at, especially p- yeah. people say like at my age and stuff, I think it's, I'm, I feel the strongest and the most controlled emotionally, mentally um, mm-hmm. than I have my whole life. And, and I feel the strongest physically and I'm the most dedicated and admitted all, and, and in a smart way. Like I'm not overtraining crazy. Like I'm pushing, pushing, pushing. And then I, 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 I know how to rest now and I know how to push and rest. Yeah. I didn't know that previously. I would just grind, 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 Train grind, 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 grind. <clears throat> Yeah, I'll be yeah. way smarter. And, and because I'm getting older, I don't want to, you know, overdo it. And then, you know what I'm saying? I, even though back when I was younger, I was overdoing it and having half the fight in me. Now that I look back, I'm like, damn, I had, I took all the fight out of me in camp. And then, I mean, I still did great, but I, I probably could have been faster, stronger because I noticed like when I'm resting more, I'm coming super explosive yeah. in my training and not, yeah. So I just learned a lot more um so i think that the age and uh, none of that shit matters dude it's, well, it's how you is, uh, take care of your body in the end what i always say is like age is, is it's a man-made concept in the end like it's not a it is. like time is a man-made concept like that's what what's crazy about you know what people say you have to have your life together by right. 30 or you have to have like you know right. none of that matters like in the end and, and and physically as well like people's bodies are different and the way they live their right. life makes them age differently yeah absolutely i i agree so i don't and, and for a long time i was like oh i'm getting too old to do this i'm doing like and i thought that my whole career because i started late i'm like oh i'll never like in the back of your mind you still have like oh i'll never have a chance to be who i want to be because i didn't start at this age or blah 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 you know and i think mm-hmm. that's so i robbed myself of yeah. things and i've had coaches tell me to retire they're like you need to retire already i'm just i, I look back and i'm just like you are such a piece of shit, dude. Yeah, like, you no, know, like, look, you're at like, you're, you're in a pay per view. I mean, <laughs> yeah, this is like, I'm like, why, why, why? Just people just throw throw their their opinions at you, and they he stopped. You know what I mean? And I, I just I just feel like I would not. I'm not. I if I see somebody getting brain damage and they're like de- declining in that way, or there's like a medical thing, or something like that, then I'm going to be like, Hey dude, you got to stop. But yeah. not because some dude's 35 or 32 or whatever, <laughs> age, know. you know, you know, because it's, we have so many, new, uh, we're so knowledgeable now that we're ever of how to train differently, how to preserve, how to eat better, how to come back with recovery massages. Um, all that stuff matters. And it's different times and uh, there's no limits. And I am definitely a living tale for that because what I'm going to beat the shit out of my next opponent and she's nine years younger than me. And I'm going to keep beating the shit out of these youngsters and these people. 
I think them being younger is actually a disadvantage because I have a lot of experience. First of all, I have tons of experience on top of um, the physical. I still have my physical there. Like I'm still fast. I'm still strong. It's, I haven't declined. And I think that's a lot of these coaches are probably going to be telling them, Oh, she's, she's 39 or whatever. She's, you know, man, I, I, that's, that's, uh, this old lady's going to beat the shit out of him. (laughs) So yeah, my question here is like your next opponent, Britton Hart, since she's improved, like since the first time you fought, for sure. I mean, there's no way she's gone. I mean, her, I think her aggressions, I think her gr- aggression and her confidence has gotten much stronger. Yeah. That's what you get from beating big names. And I mean, what, so, so that's, so, but skill wise, you don't see any, imp- like not much improvement. It's more like just the aggression and, and, and the heart. So to say like the. I've, I've been studying her. I study. I'll know her more than her coach knows her. Um, I research. I dig on every opponent. I dig on their personal. I dig on their mm. athletic life. I I know everything by the time I know all your triggers. Um, her skill. I can't. Mm. I feel like she's the same, dude. If you right. go back, go look at her jab and look at her her hooks and her her movement. She's just like her confidence is there now. She'll stay there longer, which is going to hurt her with me. <laughs> like you know, so in my opinion, she hasn't she hasn't put forth enough in her skill in her skills. And I don't even think she knows how to do that yet. I think she, she might be pushing harder in practice. Ah! But you see, is that an emotional like, thing? Yeah, maybe. Do yeah. you think? Yeah, she's all beating she's, her she's, mentally is also like half the war, half the battle. Oh yeah, absolutely. And she's very easy to do. With. <laughs> she's interesting easy for the, for the press conference. Oh, she's going to be at this press conference. Oh my God. You got to tune in, guys, because this ratchet is going to get ratchet, you know. So, sorry about that. My, yeah, yeah, the ratchet's going to get super ratchet. And I could just imagine what this crazy ass lunatic is going to do. I mean, she don't want to get in my face. I, I'm scared for her to come up on me at press conference and I knock her out by accident. I don't want to do that. I'm going to be like, you do keep her away from me. Because I don't want to knock this bitch out before I get in the ring. Because I want to make my money and get my belt. <laughs> yeah, don't don't mess up the paycheck so, right now. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, but, she's the type that kind of tries to put her hands, like, in your face. Like, ever since she fought me, like, she's been, like, like psycho. Like, if you watch her build up, like, she's, like, at weigh-ins and stuff. She's cool. She's chill. Now she's just, like, what is wrong with you? Yeah, like, she went from the, the girl next door. She did that. Had she had the girl next door vibe, kind of went the opposite. I think I hit her so hard that I, the brain cell that stopped her ratchism from coming out in public, <laughs> fell out of her eye <laughs> that I cut. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! <laughs> so the the ratchet brain cell that that you know the ratchets that hide it, that that hiding ratchet, it fell out when I punched her. That's how psych. Okay, right, <laughs> I'm not a psychologist. I don't know how the how it works. I think you know? so. I I think so. I think from yeah. my my studies, I think that's what happened. Do you have any resentment towards like uh towards her more like the the promotional push that she has gotten? You think that that do you think she? I was gone. I understand it. Mm. And it's like cause like cause I don't know how she ended up. Was it just because of that? Because it wasn't that deep of a division back before Paige came as well, and uh, and she had won her fight, so they just put her against Paige. It was more that that's that's the yeah, idea. I, I think it. it was blonde versus blonde. Blonde versus blonde, yeah. Well, and I think uh, Paige probably wanted. I, they pick her because they think they could beat her, because she's not very good. So, so, yeah, so I, that's think, what I think. 
I mean, yeah, they're, they're I mean, not going to pick me. They're not going to be like, oh, I want to fight Misfit. I do think, yeah, maybe too, too dangerous of a fight for Paige. And then what I will give her with Britain is that, of course, she has proven the doubters wrong every single time. Yeah, and that's the thing. And maybe that she, I mean, she's proven the she, she beat the promoters Paige. wrong. She beat Paige. In that sense. She didn't. She did. She didn't. Because I do agree. Her. I do think they brought her in to, to Of course, they wanted to set Paige up for a win, and they right. wouldn't expect wouldn't have expected Paige to be on a two fight losing streak now, and then, like zero and two in the in, in the promotion. So, yeah, yeah. All right. Well, but Br- but Britain but Britain is a boxer, so I mean she comes she from is. a boxing background, mm-hmm. so. And she and she's a little bit of a she has that dirty boxing in her because probably because she's a street fighter too, you know she fought on the streets when you know she is um, from the streets. <laughs> if, did you? I don't know if I, I sent uh, they they made a new volume to Britain Hart. She's like I'm from the streets. I'm from the streets. I'll ask her about. So, we're we're, you know, we're gonna have her on Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, they have. Uh, she 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 has that dirty boxing. She has the boxing, so I think. And Paige hadn't got hit with a bare knuckle yet, and you know, uh, Britain's kind of like ah, so might have thrown Paige overwhelming. Off a bit, you know, yeah. She did like it was. It was. I think uh, I would describe it as an overwhelming uh, fight for 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 Paige. It was like yeah. She... Sorry, I don't hear you. You lost your audio. No, but all what I was saying is Paige got ratchetismed. Ratchism. <laughs> what is that? Uh, all right. Explain Ratchism. that concept. <laughs> Explain it to the audience. Well, because Britain Hart acts like. You want me to ask her, like, next time she comes on, like, uh, Christine says you have ratchetism? <laughs> like, <is> that... <laughs> Britain, no heart, ratchet. That's her name. So she acts out of pocket all the time. She's acts she has ratchet behavior, and so I think Paige got ratchetismed, and that's why it was overwhelming. She's not used to that ratchetism behavior, and I think it threw her off. But <laughs> hey, Paige came. Hey, Paige came back at the end of that fight. If there was one more round, I think Britain would have folded. I can't remember if it was like was the cardio fading because I did notice yeah. a cardio fade against uh, Pearl in the end. Pearl. But- yeah, in the pro fight there was like a, a fading cardio, I guess, uh, with Britain in the end. That like like there, I also thought like if it lasted one more round, it might have gone Pearl's way, I guess. Well, I think Pearl won that fight. Like when I was sitting ringside, I thought Britain won. I honestly, did. I was like, okay, Britain won because first of all, we're in Florida. Second of all, huh. she looked like she was coming forward. Like she just looks more aggressive. Like she, yeah. she looks it. But if you watch it from like when I watched it, when I, I studied the fight, I put on that fight. I feel bad for Pearl was, now. I'm like, oh shit, Pearl, because she won that fight. I love Pearl. Pearl's like her stature and her balance. Ooh, she was yeah. I, I loved like it. it. Um, I thought yeah, I thought it was really close, and I uh, I thought if I scored it like for me because I come from boxing, like I, I like watching boxing from since I was a kid and. Boxing, if you score it boxing wise, I thought Pearl won. But then again, there's these yeah. elements of bare knuckle where I was like, if you kind of see it that way, I guess she stole a couple more rounds. But, Britain did. Yeah. But Britain Hart put the headlock thing. She doesn't do use a clinch. She headlocks. Yeah, and then people punches the yeah. But that's against the rules. If you look, it says no oh, headlocks. Really? Oh, see, that's new to me. I mean, like, look, I'm new. The first, like I, I, the first bare knuckle I watched was uh, Malinaji uh, Lobo. You can yeah. clinch. Yeah. But there's no. She was going like a bulldog choke kind of thing, like from that yeah. side, and then hitting. Right, right, right. So what do you? So okay, because you you do talk to the referees before the fight, right? Is that something you're gonna yeah. talk to the ref about before? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because hmm. that's against the rules. That was like, that, you're right. That is something she used a lot, and I, I wasn't aware of that being against the rules. She to uses be it in her previous. She uses it in her previous too. Because to me, like clinch is like okay, clinch is tight clinch. You know? Clinches. But clinch, I thought clinch, like they here. included that like in the clinch because I see it so much. What the fuck is that? And he let it happen. Yeah. So that was against, and I think that actually uh, that bloodied her nose. I think. So you know what I mean. That could. That's. I don't know. 
Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, anyway. I will be mentioning that to the ref, Britain Hart, Britain No Hart, Ratchet. You cannot put me in a headlock. We'll put that clip out. <laughs> Send you that clip. So okay, let's let's get into some fan questions then, because these fans, uh, you know, came out a couple of them. And uh, how much time do you have left, by the way? You have some time. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's okay. I want to be respectful of your time, so. Um, it's all good. It's all good. I'm sorry for being a bit late because the. Oh, you're fine. No, no, no. All right. But that's like, uh, you know, you're the first guest of 2022, which is an honor. I appreciate <laughs> so it. I'm happy yes, you I came appreciate on. it. All right. Sports Queen underscore 15. So, what made you want to become a fighter? I guess summed up like shortly. Yeah. I, I am. I, I just, I was born this way. I've always been this way. I've, I've been fighting. I think it's natural instinct for a lot of us. So, um, I tapped in and embraced. Hmm. Sabi Al Jurani, what do you do in order to not underestimate Britain and not slip up? I train for every opponent the same. I learned that from Mayweather. You train for every opponent the same, no matter who they are. Regardless, and he made it of seem like uh, with a lot of them, maybe it was mental warfare. He made it seem like he wasn't training the same for everyone. Right. That's what I like right. about it. Okay, and uh, Shelby Interiors, how do you see the fight play out exactly? Whew. An accurate, I'm gonna exact feel her out. I'm going to feel her out. She's going to feel my power. I'm going to land something good. And I'm going to calculate the knockout. One or, round one or two. Round one or two. Those are two minute rounds, guys. <laughs> those are like, that's, those are short fight. that's a short fight. It's very short. All right, this is cool. Samuel the God 90, one of our loyal followers. If you were the president of BKFC, which two active fighters from any combat sport would you put in the ring together in bare knuckle fighting? The fight that would Katie in Taylor and make Amanda the most Serrano. Money. Who? <laughs> Katie Taylor and Amanda Serrano. <laughs> in bare knuckle. <laughs> that is great. Amanda, you got, yeah. Katie Taylor, Katie one of the Taylor, goats, and then oh, Amanda Serrano's Amanda volume Serrano. as well. God, I love them. Yeah. I would love to fight them. Uh, even if they beat the shit out of me, I don't care. I'd fight them. <laughs> oh, this is like them against each other, yeah? And there, there's actually yeah. another one who asked, um, which non bare knuckle? F- I didn't put the name here, the person. Uh, which non bare knuckle fighter would you invite to fight you in bare knuckle? <laughs> Amanda Serrano. That'd be yeah. a great test. It would be a great test for both of you because um, bare knuckle is a different sport. We saw Pauli Malinaji lose against Artem Lobov. So that's not supposed yeah. to happen in yeah. boxing. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I would, you know, still get people. Up. All right. This page, I think we both want to support because they've been very supportive of us. They've been very supportive of women's fighting. It's the fight, the fighting now. You know, then they share a lot of our stuff. And so, what helps you get motivated to go through the training to put yourself through so much from this big fight with Brit? I've dedicated a lot of my my life. I've sacrificed a lot of my a lot of things in life for this, and I get a world title shot it's not very hard to get motivated even though it, I, I have to go through a lot of pain and a lot of um, like cutting weight and sacrifice and uh, mental torture there's not a question about it I just go through it because it's what I truly want and I don't want to live one day like I go out I'm going out partying and be like damn if I didn't go out that night for eight weeks whatever, however long I'm preparing. If I only used that time and gave it my all and gave it my best, could I have won that fight if I had lost? So it's not a question to me when I'm tired or achy or starving to just stick to the plan, stick to what I've always done. Because you're Um, like, your whole life has led you to this moment right now. Right, absolutely. You slip up now, it was like, We've wasted a lot of oh time. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not going to let Britain no heart rest. Like, that's, yeah. I feel like I'm going <laughs> to fight right now. Like, this is, yeah. <laughs> Good mindset. Last one I got. Bill Chambers, would you fight a man no holds barred for cash? How much cash? <laughs> and is this like, a, I wonder if this is like an offer or like a, a question, you know? <laughs> I mean, if. If I get paid enough, hell yeah. 
What's your what's your what would you what would be your price for that? Like, and I also don't know what like if it's a man, if it's like an untrained man or or, or a fighter that, that he means. Like, let's say it's no uh, matter what. I mean, this is different if it's like not if it's a non fighter. If it's a fighting man, that, that changes the price too. Yeah, that does. Yeah, but, but I mean, I mean, it's gonna be hard no matter what because guys have same weight class though. So when I get, yeah, but still. They have you guys. Your skulls are thick. Your everything. The bone density. Your rib your bone density. So when I hit you, I'm gonna. I'm probably might break my hand. Yeah. You know what I'm saying on your face. So who knows what's gonna happen? So and you're fast. If guys are faster, just naturally, you know. So I mean, I'm gonna want a lot of. I'm gonna want. I want at least a million. Damn. Yeah. Well, maybe someone offers it. Someone, I'm some crazy enough. millionaire out there, you know. You know what? A lot because there's a lot of these millionaires that, that have these like uh, exhibition yeah. bouts in their houses, and they get the big names in there, and yeah, nobody knows yeah. what happens there. I mean, I'll do it. Just FYI, guys. <laughs> You're not scared to do it. That's crazy. No. <laughs> All right. Well, it's only gonna hurt for a second. <laughs> when i get knocked out boom okay <laughs> yeah so wait like before you leave so this is you, you brought up the thing about the hands like um, i have a question because you the the bare knuckle the difference is you when you hit someone hard you get hurt like, yeah, how yeah. do you, do you, how do you adapt your training to like not you know not not because you could get injured you can lose your fight like that by hitting too hard so what are you making yeah, adjustments adjust, in training baby. what kind of things are you training oh, yeah. changing yeah, I do. And I, and my hands hurt. Like, like right now I can't even hit without like a lot of, a lot of, uh, yeah, because I, I, I practice like I'm in the fight and I push through the pain, but you know, I got to be smart about it, yeah. you know, and I, I do certain things and I, of course I don't want to reveal all my secrets. So I, everything I do, people pick up for me and I don't mind that, but I, I'm not gonna let it all out. Um, so, I mean, I'm at the point right now where I have to let it heal a little bit, um, yeah. you know, because it's really sore right now, <laughs> my, my specifically my right hand. No more training today. No, I have, I've sparring tonight. I, yeah, I, I, uh, I trained this morning already and I'll, I'll spar tonight. Of course you're sparring with the, yeah, you're sparring with gloves on and boxing gloves, whatever. Yeah, yeah. All right. mm -hmm. Well, Hey, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, Thank super you. excited for this fight you know uh yes, people too. we were the first platform to break this news and even though it wasn't official yet it happened and and, and chad mendez yeah. opponent was the same was the guy we mentioned so you know yeah give us our respect as well yes. <laughs> and uh yes, we're yes, here yes. with one half of the 125 belt title fight at bkfc christine faria it was great to talk to you uh, first excited, bare knuckle and... champion in history is right here the first you bare knuckle champion it's gonna be me it's gonna be by knockout 98% chance knockout, 2% TKO. So I don't oh, let it yeah. go to the decision because I know, I know this big little face is never going to win a decision from a judge. So I'm going to take them all out. I don't <sighs> care if it's a TKO or it's a knockout. But this one specifically, I'm working on knockout. Dope. Love to see it. Love to hear it. Love the confidence. And uh, we'll catch you on the other side. Yes.